Paying for College, The Basics, by Texas A&M University, Kingsville, Title V, I Care Grants. This module helps students and families learn more about how to pay for a higher education. It provides key information for students and parents so they understand the role of financial aid in helping to pay for an education. Let's see what you know. Before we dive into this module, let's take a speedy quiz to get a sense of what you may already know about paying for college. We're going to ask you five questions that will help you determine your level of familiarity and get your brain warmed up to learn more. The correct answer to each question will be encircled for future reference. Question 1. Which type of student financial aid has to be repaid? A. Scholarships B. Grants C. Loans or D. Work study. Question 2. Which is not an acceptable expense to be covered by student financial aid? A. Room and board B. Car payment C. Meals or D. Tuition and fees Question 3. How early during a student's senior year in high school can he or she fill out the FAFSA? A. September 1st B. December 1st C. October 1st or D. March 1st Question 4. Which of the following will not change regardless of which college you attend? A. Expected family contribution B. Cost of attendance C. Need or D. Tuition Question 5. It is usually best to make your college choice based on which of the following? A. Cost of tuition and fees B where your friends are going, C, quality of athletic programs, or D, ability to meet your educational goals. So, you've decided to go to college. There's lots you may already know, but there's also lots you need to learn more about, like how to pay for it all. Darlene needs some help. She's a high school senior and she's ready to go to college. We've been sent here to help both of you on your way. So, let's go. First of all, don't think you can't go to school because you don't have any money saved. And don't eliminate any schools you want to go to just because you think they are too expensive. You shouldn't worry about how much it costs. Well, not just yet. We'll get to the issue of cost in a moment. When it comes to exploring colleges, focus on keeping your options open. Darlene has chosen to keep the schools on her list that are most likely to meet her educational needs, goals, and priorities. How is buying a college education different from buying other things? First of all, think of buying your education as an investment. Your federal and state governments, businesses, churches, and even colleges themselves all want to help you and Darlene get the education you want. Why would they care? One reason is that when you finish your education, you earn more money. And when you earn more money, you can buy more and give more back to your community. And that makes everyone happy. That's what everyone wants. So let's start at the beginning. Everyone is different. No one makes the exact same amount of money. And no one has the same family situation. We all know that. You may come from a family that has stored some cash away to pay for college or you may be on your own, and you haven't had the chance to save anything for school. In Darlene's case, she lives with her family, but it's been difficult for them to save any money for college. What they have is what they have. It's all that they have, and that's it. To figure out what you can reasonably afford to pay for college, the federal government makes a calculation. The amount you and your family can afford to pay for your education is called the Expected Family Contribution, or EFC for short. It's just a fancy way of saying, this is how much you and your family can contribute toward your education in a given year. That figure, which is calculated from the information on your FAFSA, is the same, no matter which school you choose. We'll talk more about the FAFSA later. 
So whether it's the expensive top tier college on the other side of the country or the college in your hometown, the price tags of different schools won't change your EFC. In Darlene's case, she's looking at several schools based upon her interest in chemistry and her desire to be at a school that offers a rich student life. Because she's still exploring her options, she's not focusing so much on the price at the moment. How much does it cost to go to a school? Each college has already figured all that out. They've done the math for you. The cost to attend a school for a year, including tuition, fees, books, meals, and housing, is called the cost of attendance, or COA for short. Do you think the cost to go to each school is the same? Of course not. The COA is different at every school. For example, going to school in your own state may cost less than going out of state. So now, let's start to pull the picture together. At every school, the Financial Aid Office is available to help you find money you need to fund your education. They work with you to connect you with the money you need. When you apply to college and you apply for financial aid, this office takes your expected family contribution and subtracts it from the school's cost of attendance. The difference between those numbers is called your financial need. Sounds about right, huh? Because it's the money you need to go to that particular school. Let's stop for a moment. This all sounds fine and good. But you might ask, how does each school get my EFC? Remember the thing we called the FAFSA? That's your ticket to play the game. Let's explore that a bit more. The application you complete to apply for financial aid is known as the FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Yes, you got that right. It's free. The first thing to remember is that you don't have to pay a dime to prepare it or send it in. If someone tries to charge you, go find someone else to help. Ask your school counselor if you don't know where to go. The FAFSA is a form you can fill out online or on paper if necessary, but do it online if possible. It's easier and quicker. One evening, Darlene and her parents spend a little time together after gathering a few pieces of information, like their tax documents, in Darlene's list of schools, they created a username and password, which is referred to as an FSA ID, and submitted her FAFSA that very evening. The FAFSA asks you financial questions about you and your parents, and also about your education plans, like which schools you think you might want to attend. You can complete the FAFSA for the first time as early as October, before the academic year you plan to enroll. And you complete a renewal FAFSA every year after that, as long as you are going to school and you need financial aid. On the FAFSA, you can list up to 10 schools you want to attend. Darlene listed three, but you can definitely list more. Once the government has done some calculations, those schools get access to your information, including your EFC. And this happens with minimal effort once you've completed your FAFSA. So, you should complete the FAFSA every year you need financial aid. Got it? Good! Now let's go back to the financial aid office. Since you list all the schools that you are thinking of attending on your FAFSA, the financial aid office at those schools get your information once your FAFSA is processed. They then calculate your financial need. Remember, that's the difference between your EFC and COA. And here's where financial aid comes in. Financial aid is money available to help you make up that difference. Each financial aid office will attempt to put together a financial aid package that will meet your financial need. They will try to fill the gap between what you can pay and what it costs to attend their school. And how do they try to fill that gap? We're glad you asked. You will receive an award letter from the financial aid office. The aid can be understood in terms of eligibility, meaning whether the aid is need-based or merit-based, and also whether it is a loan, grant, scholarship, or work-study offer. We'll start with the categories of eligibility. Some financial aid is need-based. To get it, you must demonstrate that you need it. Your eligibility is determined based on the information you provide on the FAFSA. The other type of financial aid is merit-based. This means that you get the financial aid because of how well you perform academically. This could mean you have good grades in high school, or you had high scores on your college entrance exams, like your SAT or ACT. Then, 
There are other types of financial aid that might be available to you, based on other factors. For example, you may receive financial aid because you are studying to enter a career that needs more people qualified for jobs in that field. Categorizing financial aid another way, there are scholarships, grants, loans, and work-study. The benefits to each kind of financial aid differ. Now let's take a look at Darlene's financial aid award letter. She applied to Mind State University, or MSU, and was accepted. She applied for financial aid and received the following information in her award letter. The COA for MSU is $24,000 a year, and the FAFSA determined that Darlene and her family's EFC was $6,000 per year. This means that Darlene has a financial need of $18,000. The financial aid office took this information and created a financial aid package for Darlene. In this package, they are offering Darlene $3,000 in work study, $5,000 in an institutional grant, $5,000 in scholarships, and $5,000 in loans. Let's go through each type of financial aid Darlene has been offered. First, let's look at scholarships. Scholarships are almost always free money. That means it's money you don't have to pay back. Scholarships can be either need-based or merit-based. Scholarships can come from the school, or they can come from somewhere else. For example, scholarships may come from churches, organizations, or businesses in the community. Generally, the more scholarships you get, the better. After all, it's money you don't have to pay back. Just make sure you understand the terms for your award. Some scholarships may require you to keep your grades up, to major in a specific subject, or they may have other limitations. Make sure you understand everything before accepting one. Oh, and one more thing. If you've been awarded a scholarship outside of your college, you must report it to the financial aid office. Now let's look at grants. Grants are usually need-based and are mostly free money. That means that it's money you generally don't have to pay back. Why generally? Well, because with some grants, if you quit school after you have received the funds but before the term ends, you have to pay some of that money back. Just like with scholarships, make sure you understand the conditions of your grant. There may be requirements to qualify for or to keep grant funds. Ask questions and understand what you need to do. Now, let's talk work-study. Work-study is a special type of part-time job. It's special because your employer, which is usually the school, understands that school is your full-time priority. Because of this, you get lots of flexibility on the hours you work. Usually, the money you make through work-study helps you pay for basic day-to-day -day expenses. You'll have to apply from a list of jobs. Your financial aid office will direct you to the list. You'll probably also have to go through an interview. Now, let's talk about loans. Unless you plan to attend a very low-cost college or you are awarded many scholarships, you'll find that the colleges you apply to will typically need to offer you some loans to help you pay for your education. It's just a simple reality because getting an education these days can be expensive. Loans are money you borrow to pay for school. For purposes of this presentation, we are referring to federal loans available through the school after you complete the FAFSA. Generally, a loan is the only type of financial aid that you will need to pay back. The good news is that you probably won't have to start repaying as long as you are in school and enrolled at least half time. First, let's talk features. Generally, student loans have low interest rates which means they cost less than consumer loans. Most student loans also offer lots of repayment plans to meet your needs. You can even postpone repayment in most situations if you decide to go back to college. And even though you have to repay money you borrow to get your education, unlike consumer loans, you can get help if you lose your job. If you aren't earning enough money to make payments, or you run into a situation where you need some relief. Oh, and another good thing, most loans have a six-month grace period after you graduate. When you begin repayment, the most important thing to remember is don't just ignore any problems you have repaying your loan. Get help. Call your loan servicer if you borrow student loans and run into problems meeting your payments. 
Now, let's get back to Darlene. Darlene was basically happy with the financial aid letter she received from MSU, but she didn't just apply there. She applied at two other schools, Evergreen Community College and Union University. And remember what we talked about earlier? COA can differ from school to school, but the EFC is the same, regardless of the school. In each case, each school put together a financial aid award to help Darlene pay for school, but the amounts and the kinds of financial aid offered to her were different. Also, not all schools are able to meet her financial need. In Darlene's case, as with other students, she may be able to address this unmet need through additional scholarships. There are many free search engines available on the internet to help with this. Darlene was able to compare offers, chat with her family, and make a decision based on the offers presented and based on what she really wanted from her college education. So, as you can see, paying for college is possible. There is financial aid available to help you. As you begin your process of finding which schools may work for you, focus on what you want to learn and how that school may be a good fit for you. Review your award letter as you consider costs. You may be surprised how much help you can get from your preferred school. Best of luck to Darlene, and to you as well, as you both start off on your journey. Remember at the beginning of the module when we took a quiz to see what you know about paying for college? It's that time again. Let's retake the same quiz and see what you've learned. Note that in this round, the questions and answers are mixed. So while you'll recognize the language in each, be attentive because their order is different. And we've thrown in a bonus question to assess your overall confidence with this subject. Right now, we're taking the post-test. Let's get started. Which is not an acceptable expense to be covered by student financial aid? Tuition and fees, room and board, car payment, or meals? It is usually best to make your college choice based on which of the following. Ability to meet your educational goals, cost of tuition and fees, where your friends are going, or quality of athletic programs. Which type of student financial aid has to be repaid? Work study, scholarships, grants, or loans? How early during a student's senior year in high school can he or she fill out the FAFSA? March 1st, September 1st, December 1st, or October 1st? Which of the following will not change regardless of which college you attend? Tuition, expected family contribution, cost of attendance, or need? Since I completed the presentation, I have increased my confidence on how to apply for student financial aid. Do you strongly disagree? Disagree? Are neutral? Agree? Or strongly agree?